Hello, and on today's video, we're going to look at some of my Chinese gas masks or respirators. And this isn't so much like a Chinese gas mask collection video, because I've only got about three of them. This is more just kind of to talk about what China did over time with their respirators. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with masks from the 1960s, and I only have one mask from the 1960s, but I can talk about the overall design. Now, during the 1960s, China basically made masks that were very similar to copies of Soviet masks, but not quite the same. They were sort of improved upon, I guess you'd say. So, what the Chinese did was they basically... This one's, as I said before, is obviously a copy of the Soviet PMG. It just looks so much like it, but with triangular-style American lenses. Um, and then you've got, you know, the PMG's bit here, but you've also got ear holes in this mask. Um, you've got your exhale valve at the front there, and you've got your voice diaphragm under here. Now, I can't remember on this one if there's a way of actually taking off the cover and looking at the voice diaphragm. But you can at least see it from the inside of the mask. And Chinese masks have this really interesting voice diaphragm sort of slash exhale valve, because you see on this mask, the exhale valve is actually separate. The exhale valve's at the bottom, the voice diaphragm's at the top, but it's basically like a rubber drum skin. So, unlike a lot of the masks, oh, this will screw off, here we go. There you can see the voice diaphragm. Unlike a lot of the masks, the Chinese ones have kind of just kept the same design over time. So rather than using a bit of plastic or a thin bit of rubber, they've done a fairly thick bit of rubber separate from the exhale valve, which is a good way to do it. So if you look at this, this is basically a PMG cut down in size, but most of the masks from this period were basically this. The Chinese had an earlier mask, I can't remember the exact name, it might have been M63 or M64, or Type 63, Type 64. And that was basically the Soviet MM1, the you know membrane mask 1, tank crewman's mask but, um, you know, made to look a bit different than it was, you know, Chinese. Then they made a mask called the M65, which is probably the worst cheek filter mask ever made. It's basically, a lot of people incorrectly call that the North Vietnamese Army M65. You now the Chinese made it and just sent it to the North Vietnamese. But it's basically very similar to this, but it's got a massive cheek filter on the side. And supposedly you can't even change that cheek filter at all. It's not just hard like with an M17. It's, it's almost been stitched into the mask and you wouldn't be issued a replacement one. So you better hope by the time you get your mask there's still a fair bit of life left in the filter or it's pretty much a useless respirator. Anyway, a problem I've got with a load of my Chinese masks is they've all come in small sizes. Um, so I'm going to have to really stretch this. Luckily I haven't got long hair at the moment. But... Okay, so that's this mask on. Hopefully you can hear the voice diaphragm isn't too bad. It's quite a good working system. Let me just take the cover off so you can see it. So that's the voice diaphragm. As you can see, when I talk, this bit moves. If I touch it, I can feel it vibrating. But overall, um, quite a good voice diaphragm system for the time. Obviously, that M65 cheek filter mask, they only had for about um, four years. Because... Um, if the M69 was a replacement mask for it, then, yeah, they got rid of that fairly quickly. As you can see, Tissot tube going to each eye, which is a good design. The nose actually has a proper nose. It's not really an oral nasal cut, but it sits close enough to the nose that it's not going to, um... I'm probably going to have to put this cover back on with the mask off, unless I'm twisting it the wrong way. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was doing it the wrong way. So, um, yeah, the, uh... The mask is quite well made design, it's basically an improved PMG, more compact voice diaphragm, exhale valve down there. The interesting thing with Chinese masks as well is they didn't know, because of the Sino-Soviet split, if they'd always be allied with Russia or whatever. So with the Chinese masks, you'll find that they've got the kind of normalised thread, which means both GOST and NATO masks seem to fit them alright, which is very good. So. This is the Chinese M69. I think this is personally a very well designed respirator for when they made it. Yeah, it's not quite an S10 or anything like that, but it's certainly better than the Soviet PMG was. And yeah, this is just a very well designed mask. As you can see, it's airtight. I've tested this mask and it does work. So anyway, this was the Chinese M69. I think a very good mask. This is the filter that came with it. Very lightweight plastic filter, apparently filled with asbestos, so I really don't want to, um, you know, use this filter, but 
very lightweight plastic filter. But yeah. So the M69 I was saying very competent for when it was designed. Okay, now for our next Chinese mask that's not all that different. It's the Chime Chinese MF11, I believe is one of the names. The military name for it is the FMJ05. Now, the only difference is they did one version with a drinking tube and one version without. This is the non-drinking tube version. You can sometimes find these on eBay if you type in like Chinese Soviet spray paint mask or something like that. Um, but these, again, are quite competent, well-made masks. Let me just wipe some of that. I think I put some anti-fog paste on the inside. And as a result, um, all the dirt sticking to the inside of the lenses. But regardless, again, this isn't quite in my size, but it has got an oral nasal cup inside. It's got the same system for the um, voice diaphragm, but this one's got the exhale valve is the ring around it. So if I take the cover off the front, you'll be able to see that better. Got a bit of dust, <laughs> dust up my nose now. So there you go. The exhale valve, oop, there goes the entire assembly. But yeah, the XL valve is that bit. The voice diaphragm is the blue bit. So let's put that back in the way it's meant to go. Where it just literally sits there. Then you screw that back on. So very easy uh, system. You could literally just get a replacement part to change the voice diaphragm and the XL valve. And this is done up with six elasticated straps. As said, this is another mask that's not in my size, so let me pop it on. Now, the interesting thing of this is I can actually do it up and get it airtight, uh, so it would work. It's just not very comfortable for me because, obviously, it is far too small for my face. Um, but if I had this in a medium size, I think this would be a really good mask, to be honest. Okay, there we go. Right, so, again, this is actually very similar to the Type 69, to be honest. It's made out of black plastic instead. You can see the airtight seal. The XL valve and voice diaphragm are, like, ringed around each other, as I showed, rather than being one down there and one there. But overall, it's very similar, just with a proper oral nasal cup in this one. Now, as far as I'm aware, China did domestically design this mask, but I think it's mostly because it's just an improvement of the Type 69 kind of design. Um, as far as I'm aware, China still uses this for its military and lots of, like, civilian industry and stuff like that. However, they have a mask that's replaced this called the FMJ08, which I don't own, which is an S10 ripoff. So I guess China really like the S10 like I do. As you can see, uh, you know, it's a great mask. To be honest, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, this one's too small for me, as you can definitely see in the chin area, and I can feel it in my nose. But this in medium is actually a very good mask. As I said, I don't think these Chinese masks are bad at all. I think some people have implied that before. But at least these masks are on. I'd be very interested in getting the one that's the MM1 ripoff and the one that's the S10 ripoff, because, you know, I really like the S10s. So I'd really love a Chinese S10, but they're quite expensive. But this thing... Yeah, it's great for what it is. It's a very lightweight mask. I think it looks cool. Um, and yeah, takes again 40mm either NATO or GOST filters, so you're alright there. But yeah, it's a good mask. I can't complain. Like, my only complaint is it's not in my size. The peripheral seal works well. The straps work well. You know, I can't really fault this. It does its job of being a respirator very well. I'll also point out that this comes with this. Now, there's a little bit of flimsy paper in it when I got it that ripped, which I think was a very basic particle filter. But this thing's quite interesting, because what you can do is unscrew this in a bit. And I guess the idea is that you have, like, a filter, like a little particulate filter pad laid across there against that bit there. Then you um, screw this in to it. And then that means if you wanted it, you can have like a very basic little small particle filter put against the intake there. So that's quite a clever design. Um, but it's just a shame that the um, Chinese particle filters that came with it were out of crap and, you know, ripped as soon as I had kind of go, oh, what's that? Oh, it ripped. And the mask that I talked about quite recently, it's the Chinese TF1, which is, um, you know, the Russians have that nice SHM mask style. Let's take it. Um, so, this has the normalised thread which I like, but the exhale valve isn't actually as good as the GP5s, it tends to stick and then not open properly. So weirdly I have to finger the mask before wearing it to, you know, just get it to work properly. 
Um, but there we go. So it has the Tissot tubes. It's literally the exact same thing as a GP5, just made from a different kind of rubber. Slightly bigger eyepieces, made from a plastic, maybe polycarbonate if you're lucky, I don't know. Um, not, you know, glass. But it can take NATO filters, which is great. So let's just pop this on. There we go, so that's this mask on me. As you can see, our tight seal. Now the exhale valve is working at the moment. The issue being, though, that the exhale valve doesn't actually move much air through it. Now, um, overall, this isn't a bad mask at all. It is literally, if you like the GP5, here is a Chinese version of a GP5 type mask that takes, you know, NATO filters if you want it to. It's a normalised thread. Now, I think from where I tested it last time, there was still a bit of charcoal dust left in there that's gone into my eyes. It just made my eyes sting a bit now. Um, but yeah, again, like a GP5, this will fold up very small if you wanted it to, to put into some sort of bag for EDC or concealed carry use. You know, you could fold that really small probably without damaging the mask. Um, the Chinese filters that come with this is a bit crap. I've explained before in the video where I looked at it, but it was basically the filters are too small to have enough charcoal in to actually work properly. So really, you know, they need to upsize the filters. I've seen the industrial filters for this mask are like coffee can ones, so they would work fine because they hold a lot more charcoal. But overall, yeah, this is a good mask. Um, yeah, I quite like this mask. Can't complain about it really at all, other than the valves not being great. But... As far as I'm aware, this was made for industry and export, not actually as a military mask, or maybe it's a civil defence one, but again, China seems to have quite a few masks they produce simultaneously, because there's also all the 3M rip-offs as well, and all those other things. Now I'll just show you one more thing before we conclude this video. The Chinese 40mm hose. Now these are brilliant, because if you like older generations of military hoses, it doesn't want to unscrew now, does it? There we go. Um, if you like older gen of military hoses, this is basically your Soviet hose, except it seems to take NATO filters at the bottom just fine. And you can screw it into either a GOST or a NATO mask because normalised threads. So you can use a NATO filter of a Soviet mask with this, or um, you know you just can get a much better quality hose than the Soviet ones. The inside of the hose is rubber, but then it's got this kind of canvasy material on it, which is quite comfortable. Um, the ends are done up with cable ties, but... Yeah, overall, can't complain about this hose at all. Works absolutely fine. Hello! But yeah, um, can't complain about the hose. Uh, you can sometimes get TF1s and the other masks with a hose bundled in. My camera battery is about to die, so yep. Yeah. Hope you like the Chinese stuff, it's actually overall fairly good.